Hey Michael with X-Force PC. I've been here all day running benchmarks on a whole array of 8th generation Intel processors. And what I want to do now is, I've only done this once before, but I want to do a de-litting of a processor. So um, this isn't something you can really practice a whole lot because once you've de-litted a chip, you've de-litted it. And then the only way to to do it again is to delit another one. So I want to kind of do this live, as they say. Um, so what you might say, why would you want to delit a chip? Well, the reason is um, this silver part is actually not the processor. It is a cap or a lid, as you may say. Um, that's why they call it delitting. And underneath this, it's, it's, it's protective. And underneath this is where the actual processor resides. Um, and in between this lid and this PCB is um, some TEM, as, as the you know pros call it. It stands for thermal interface material. And so Intel used, some people have kind of given them a hard time about it, some inexpensive TEM or thermal interface material between this cap and the chip underneath. And what that has resulted in is it's harder to overclock, it's harder to cool, um, and you can get much better performance if you take the paste out and replace it with liquid metal. So we're going to see if we can de-lid this thing. First of all, I wanted to weigh it. It weighs 1.1 ounces, which sounds like nothing, but it actually feels, you know, sort of hefty for its size. The reason I weighed it Sorry, my phone's ringing. They're just going to have to wait. The reason I weighed it is because when I take this lid off, the first time I did it, I was shocked at how light the chip actually is. Almost all the weight is in this um, lid that's on here, and the chip itself weighs almost nothing. So this is a de-litter. You wouldn't want to de-lid this, you know, without using a de-litter. And you can find these on Amazon or wherever. And I'm not necessarily advocating anyone do this. But, you know, the little mark here lines up with the mark on the chip. And you put it in here. And... Pardon me while I fumble around a little bit. Yep, this little thing slides on. And see how that just bumps or stops there and won't go any further? That's because it's hitting the edge of the lid. So now I put this little deal on and I take my Allen wrench and um, maybe we'll zoom in a little bit for the momentous occasion. Um, so I'll start tightening this until I feel it give. So it's pushing this way against the chip, putting pressure on it. Oh, and there it went. You saw my hand sort of jump there. The lid has now been released from the processor. So I'll dump that out. I got a little piece of sliver of metal in my finger somehow. Um, and then this lid comes off of here. And there you see the paste. It's no more than a um, thermal paste. It's like a grease sort of stuff. Um, I mean, it's like a penny's worth of that stuff. Even the liquid metal isn't that expensive. I bought a tube of it for about $15, and I could probably do, you know, 10 of these processors for $15. Now let's weigh this again. Remember, it was 1.1 ounce, ounces. 0.15 ounces. So the chip is actually about 10% of the total weight. Once I put this on there, it goes to 1.1. Sorry, the phone ringing again. Um, so it does tell you that, you know, this is just incredibly light. I mean, it feels like a potato chip, how light it is. So what I'll do is I'll clean off this adhesive here and the adhesive around the edge here and I'll clean off this thermal paste and then we'll come back and talk about the what we're going to replace it with. Okay so I've cleaned off 
the adhesive for the most part. I mean, I didn't do the crazy, crazy, crazy good job, but a pretty good job. I used a, a plastic spudger, I think is what you call these. Anything plastic to kind of scrape it off. The adhesive they use isn't terribly, you know, difficult to get off of there. You just take something plastic like a credit card or something to that consistency and you can scrape it off. And the re litting process, um, at least with this particular de-litter, it comes with a way to lid it as well. You put it back into the holder like that and I haven't, I haven't added the, um, the thermal compound, I haven't added the adhesive, I'm just showing you the process of putting the lid back on. And so you, you put the lid back on, you know, with the adhesive. And then they have this piece that goes in and sort of guides it and make sure you've got the lid on there just so. I'll have to be a lot more careful than that when I have actual adhesive on there. And then you slide on this piece and crank it down. And it applies pressure. So you... Oops, I'm not a little uh, low enough there, but it uh, you crank this down, you know, till it's touching and then maybe go another half turn. You don't want to go crazy tight with it, and that will hold on the uh, lid while the adhesive cures, and you'll have to refer to your adhesive as to how long it needs to cure. Some people have used super glue. Um, I bought this stuff, which was recommended you know, along with this particular de-litter, it's, it's, it's a gasket maker. It says it has a 24-hour um, curing time. I think I let it cure an hour the last time I did it because I'm a little too impatient for that. Let me take this back out and let's put on the liquid metal, which I know sounds really fancy. It's kind of wild. Um, so the only part we need to put it on is where the processor actually is and it comes in a syringe. And I'm just going to put a little bit out of it here. I'm pushing. I'm trying not to put too much on here. And it's a really weird consistency. It's like... It's like mercury. It kind of beads up. Like a solder that's kind of been um, melted but stays melted. It's really weird. It's like solder that's liquid at room temperature is what it feels like. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread that out evenly. I've got to go find something to do that with. And then I'm going to put a thin layer of adhesive all the way around here. Put the lid on and then reinsert it in here just like I showed you a moment ago. And then crank this thing down and let it dry. And then I've got some some thermal numbers from before I delitted this chip and then we'll do some testing to see what those numbers look like after I've delitted it and replace the TIM, also known as thermal inter interface material, with liquid metal. So we'll be back. Okay so I got a thin layer of that um, gasket material put on here and I put the um, the lid on so now I'm gonna put it into the thing, the de-litter, and I'm going to use the guide to make sure we've got the lid on correctly. And really, it's not that hard to tell if you've got it on correctly because um, you can just want the spacing to be even all the way around. You can also look at another chip. That's why I have this other chip here, so I could simply look at it and make sure I was orienting everything correctly. And you want to make sure you get the lid on properly because if you don't, when you go to put it back into your motherboard, the chip's going to be turned the wrong way and you know probably bad things are going to happen. So I'm going to slide this little vice-like thing on here and I'm going to turn it, make sure everything feels solid, yep. I'm going to turn it until we make contact, so we've made contact. And I'm going to turn it like another half turn. So there's some decent pressure on there. And it looks like there's a little ridge actually that this goes into and I didn't quite get it into that ridge. So I'm going to redo that. There we go. A little bit of adhesive there. 
wipe off of there. And so now I have to try to be patient and wait for the adhesive to dry for our um, heat spreader. And then we can see how it performs from a thermal standpoint. Okay, so the delitting experiment is complete, and I want to throw out a couple of uh, things to think about before attempting this. Um, we used an 8700K i7, and we were running it at 5 gigahertz. The normal clock speed is, I don't know, mid to low fours. Um, but you would typically do this type of thing on an unlocked high-end processor because it doesn't really make much sense to do it on a, a standard clock chip that you can't even overclock. The purpose of this is to allow you to overclock possibly higher or at least run at a lower temperature when overclocking. Now when you overclock a chip, you know, if you know what you're doing, you throw more voltage at it and that allows you to achieve higher clock speeds. But when you throw more voltage at it, you also produce more heat. And there's only so much heat you can extract out of the chip because it's dependent on the thermal interface material that's making contact with the chip to transmit that heat to your water cooler or your high-end air cooler. And if it's an if it's a insufficient or poor thermal interface material, you're just not able to get the heat out um, fast enough. So what we did is we took out the um, thermal paste which was underneath the lid and replaced it with liquid metal. There's a few things to be concerned with with liquid metal. Number one, it's metal, it's conductive, it can conduct electricity as well as heat. And so if you screw up and you put too much on there, you could short something out by the liquid metal closing a circuit of some sort and causing a short. Um, another thing that you have to be aware of is this totally voids your warranty. If you do this 100% correctly and perfectly, it still voids your warranty. So just keep that in mind. You have to be willing to, to put up with a little bit of risk when you're doing this process. Now, as far as the results, amazingly, we were able to overclock this thing uh, to 5 gigahertz on the standard um, thermal interface material, and we achieved an average um, temperature of 76.4 degrees under 100 percent full load all six cores maxed out for 10 minutes and that's pretty good because anything under 90 is technically okay now I wouldn't want to run close to 90 all the time that's pretty hot that's almost hot enough to boil water obviously um, but we were able to, to keep it around 76.4 degrees on the original chip. After delitting, we lowered our temperature on that same 10 minute run to an average temperature of 69.4 degrees. So that's a good 10% uh, temperature decrease. And a lot of that has to do with liquid metal being 15 to 20 times more heat conductive than a thermal paste. So overall, our, our project was a success. Um, we didn't have to do it. We're actually able to run five gigahertz, uh, lidded or delitted. Um, but it is nice to have that temperature reduction. It was kind of a fun experiment, but um, I don't know that I'll be doing it a ton because of the whole warranty voiding issue. But hopefully you found this fun, and you know if you're willing to take some risks, maybe you'll try it yourself.